Hello everyone, welcome to what if Issei was cheated and became Red Dragon of Remin Part 1. Before we start please go support ZBX6779 for writing that awesome fanfic. Now let's begin. Part 1. 12x the heartbreak. Issei was currently on his way back home with a box in his hand, and said box are special items he bought with his own money which he earned from the Opai Dragon show. He had access to it after winning the raiding game, it was late at night, and they had just recently won a raiding game, while the others were celebrating at home, he was preparing a surprise. When he got home, it was quiet, meaning the celebrations have died down. He didn't find anyone around so he assumed that they were in his room, after the renovation the bed they had was big enough for everyone. He walked up to his room and slowly opened the door, it was dark, but being a devil gave him night vision, and he saw something wasn't right, there are more people in this room than there should be. He turned on the light switch slowly, and as soon as he did his heart nearly stopped beating. He saw Rias, Ravel, Akeno, Zenobia, Asia, Kaneko, Roswes, Kiba, Gasper, Riser, Saji and Serg. Completely nude with only bed sheets covering some of them, the room was littered with special liquor bottles and bonums, but the latter was few in number. Issei just stood there for a minute or two, Drag was just as speechless as his partner. The bright light caused some of them to wake up. Rias. Who my head who turned on the light? Riser. So bright. Ravel. What happened? Serg. Huh. Wait are we in Issei's room? They looked around the bed and then saw everyone naked, they were shocked. Rias. Oh no did we? They then saw someone standing by the door. It was Issei. Rias. Oh shit Issei it's not what it looks like. Riser. Why dot why ya? Yeah? It's a dot um dot dot a prank. Yeah yeah it's a prank. He starts to sweat profusely. Serg was ashamed of himself. Riaz and Riser loudly denied the obvious truth, and this caused the others to wake up, it took them a second to come to their senses, and they instantly regret doing that. The Keno. Issei it's not what you think. Issei just put a finger on his lips, indicating he wants them all to shut the buck up, this whole time he didn't even blink he just stared at them. None of them dared to meet his gaze, Issei then looked at the box then back to the guys. Issei. Riser Kiba Gasper. Sarah and Saji get. Over. Here. His tone was calm but demanding obedience. They dare not refuse him. They slowly got out of bed and started to get dressed. Kaneko tried to intervene. Kaneko. Issei. Issei. Shut. Up. She flinched at his tone, his calm body language and tone scared her, she hid behind Roswes. The five guys stood before him with their heads down. Issei got up and walking towards them, his steps are completely silent, he then stood before them. Issei. Take this. Sarag and Riser being a little taller can't see the box in front of them, they slowly looked up. Issei. Go on. His voice was still so monotone. Sarag reluctantly grabbed the box. Sarag. What is? Issei. Just take the box. He nodded. Issei then looked at Riser. Issei. Riser you got a cigarette. Everyone was taken aback by this. Riser. A dot yeah. Right here. He pulled out a pack and Issei grabbed it. Riser. You can have the whole pack. Fear evident in his voice. Issei nodded. Issei. Thank you cuck. That one word suited them better than any other title they ever got. He took out a cigarette and used a small fire spell to light it. He inhaled a slow long puff and held it in only to expel the smoke a few seconds later. He then looked at everyone and finally at Asia. Issei. Asia. Asia. Dot dot why yes. He gave a small but broken smile. Issei. Take care of mom and dad. Everyone then looked directly at him. Asia. What do you dot dot mean by that? He took another puff and exhaled but no answer. He looked around the room and started walking towards the door. Kiba grabbed his arm. Kiba. Bro wait look I know what we did is wrong, and I'm not going to deny it but you can't just leave. Issei just looks at him blankly. Zenovia. We can explain. Issei. No need, it's self-explanatory. Serg. Issei please listen. He tried to put his hand on Issei's shoulder. Issei. Don't touch me. He backed away. Issei. Open the box in front of the girls. They looked at each other and moved closer to the girls, they slowly opened the box and they all gasped, most of them shed tears, and the guys clenched their fists in shame. In the box were seven engagement rings, a red one for Rias, purple for Akeno, golden for Ravel, sea green for Roswes, white for Kaneko, golden with emeralds for Asia, and blue for Zenobia. Issei. I wish you all the best and happy marriages and judging by the broken condoms. I hope you become one big happy family. Because I renounce you all. His voice was broken, no rage just hurt. He wasn't just dealing with one cheating partner, but seven and the five men, or should we say cucks were people he once called his brothers and respected them as much as the devil kings. He took another puff and walked towards the door. Saji. Issei hold on just look at me please. He stopped but didn't face Saji. He held his cigarette under his head, just below his jaw. 
A single tear fell from his cheek and onto the cigarette, extinguishing it with a slow chew sound. He looked at it, flicked it in the trash can, took out another one and lit it. He took a deep puff and walked out the door. The girls got out of bed and got dressed, they wanted to go after him, they tried to, but they kept stumbling due to panic. They called out to him, some even crawled to the door, the guys fell to their knees as the realization of betraying their brother hit them hard. Some of the girls aka Asia, Ravel and Kaneko, just sat in bed. In his bed. They looked at themselves in shame, they saw the condoms littered, some are indeed broken, the guys brought them for a say, so he could be intimate with his ladies, they looked at their now defiled pussies and saw that Kum oozed out a bit. The sight of the rings wasn't any comfort, Issei may be a perv, but he never crossed a line he shouldn't. He never took advantage of Akeno or Rias or anyone. He wanted to be with them the right way. He's a perv but a perv with morals. Issei went out for a long late night walk, he smoked one cigarette after another, he left a trail of cigarette ash and was on his last one. He smoked it slowly and he looked around, he was in the park right where he died the first time. Right now he wishes that he stayed dead. Issei. Death over this any day. Greg. Issei. Issei. Yes. Greg. I know you want to leave it won't help. Issei. But staying here will. Greg. He looked at the cancer stick between his fingers, it was now more cigarette butt than a cigarette. Luckily being a devil and all the training gave him incredible resistance towards the little things. Issei. He's a cuck but at least he picked out a good brand why am I even giving him a compliment. Greg. Partner I have no words. Issei. It's okay Drag nor do I. He just sat on the bench and let the cigarette burn itself out slowly, the straight line of smoke caressing his stoic face, his phone was blowing up from all the calls and texts from his now former harem girls. He put it on airplane mode and didn't answer any calls he was getting via communication circle. He just wanted silence. Issei. Hey Drag. Greg. Yes. Issei. When we use divine dividing what kind of effect does it have other than the obvious energy drain? The Welsh dragon was surprised by his question, after catching all seven of his loves with five guys whom he called his brothers by bond, he expected to at least talk about it if he didn't go berserk, but talking about the gears. Greg. Depends on how much you use it and on whom. The recovery time depends on whose energy you divided. Issei. So barely any loss on very small scale things. Greg. Theoretically yes but where are you going with this partner? Planning on shrinking their already micro peckers. Ha ha ha. He tried to lighten the mood, to see a positive reaction, but alas he got nothing out his host, the first dirty joke he made, and he got no reaction from his perverted partner. Issei. Drake I don't want to feel the emotional turmoil when it finally hits can you divide those emotions away whenever they try to surface. The dragon was flabbergasted, is that even possible? It should be. Gears adapt to their host's emotions, but will they function when there's a lack of it? Greg. I'm not sure, even if I was I would not recommend that, I suggest you seek help. Please go talk to someone. Issei. I fear you will have to, I don't trust myself, and if those emotions surface then I won't be able to stop myself from going berserk. Greg had to admit it, he's right. An overload of negative emotions affecting one of the Longinus gears is a guaranteed death for just about anyone. Issei. I need to get away from here I want to feel nothing. Greg. Partner please. He blocked everyone's numbers except for arenas and turned off airplane mode. He didn't even bother reading the messages he got, he looked through the photos and videos, he deleted all the porn and then looked through the pics and videos he took with everyone, a few tears started to escape his eyes. He gritted his teeth, his hands shook. Divide divide divide. His emotions disappeared, no more tears, no gritting his teeth or shaking hands. They say. Thank you Dreg. Dreg. I did what I had to. Issei began scrolling through all the photos and videos he took with his team and friends. Those with Arena Azazel his parents, his two pervy school chums. He let out a sad laugh after seeing their goofy faces. He felt mixed emotions when he saw his parents and all the girls together. They were proud of him ever since he brought Asia and the other girls home that is what they always wanted they wanted daughters and he gave them all the daughters they could ever want. Serzich's is the big brother he never had, Sarad was up there too, but no more, he's going to miss Serzich's, Grafia, Milikas and Azazel. As much as he cares for them and they for him staying will do more harm than good. Issei. I feel selfish for thinking about this. Greg. Wherever we go, I hope you can heal then return. Issei. If I heal I should leave a message for them. I just need to think about what to say and to whom. He spent the whole night in the park, his former lovers and brothers were out looking for him, some of them went through the park, Issei had stayed hidden and just ignored them. The past hosts already telling him to kill them. He just hid in the bushes listening to them talk with panic sobs in between. Hiba. Issei are you here? Please talk to us. He tried calling him only to find that his number has been blocked. Hiba. He blocked my number. Akeno. Issei sob please come back to us. Roswis. 
Issei we will marry you please come back. Issei heard their cries, but he didn't care, he was numb. He just stayed hidden. After they left to look for him elsewhere, he came out of hiding and sat by the fountain. He stayed there for a few hours contemplating on what he should say. After a while he came up with a message for everyone. He pulled out phone and started recording. After a while he called Azizel. Azizel. Hey kiddo, you're up really early. Issei. Hey sensei, there's something big going on so gather the following in the club room. Azizel. Issei what happened? Something bothering you? You sound upset. Issei. Just trust me on this. You will know soon. Azizel. Alright. Where are you? Issei. Out for a walk take care. Azizel. We'll see you at the club room. And call. He sends everyone's names to him. He then went to the club room and left a SD card there with a note. He looked around the room one last time and left. Issei. This should be enough I'm sorry everyone. Divide. At the rate Drag reduces his partner's emotions, he'll hear the word divide more frequently than he had heard his own name. The sun has risen and Issei knows it's time to leave. They'll be here soon. He leaves through the front door and passes by some of the students, Murayama, Kadis, Aika and his two buddies Mitsuda and Motohama see him. Mitsuda. Yo Issei you're here earlier than usual. He looked at them and he smiled a bit. Issei. I could say the same about you. His pretend happiness wasn't fooling anyone. Motohama. Issei what's wrong? Issei. Sigh no point in even trying to hide it, I'm leaving Kuo. The five were shocked, but the kendo club girls Kadis and Murayama were curious mostly. Aika. Where are you going? Issei. I'm not sure. Motohama. What kind of answer is that bro? Kadis. Hayato what is going on with you? Issei. I'm sorry. There's just too much going on here for me to stay. Guys you two and Aika have been good friends and I'll always remember how we messed with each other without any hard feelings. Kadis Murayama I'm truly sorry for peeking and everything else. I hope you and the others can forgive me. The five were as silent as a grave. Issei. Staying here will be the death of me. Guys I leave my porn stash for you. Come by my house after school and you can have it. Girls if you want to beat me up for old time's sake then go ahead ha ha ha. He let out a low laugh, his eyes tell the tale, if they did then he would take it on without any complaints. He's broken. Completely and utterly broken. His negative thoughts were surfacing, like a few embers of fire, but underneath that full smile lies an active volcano that could kill everyone. The five of them immediately hugged him in a group. Aika. We don't know what's going on but. Sniff. Murayama. You can call us. Motohama. We'll be right here for you. Haddis. We'll honestly miss you our lives aren't as interesting without you in it. Issei. Sniff you'll be okay without me. He then senses the others showing up one by one. Issei. I have to go I have to go before it too late. I'm sorry. He forces himself out of the group hug, he wanted to stay, but he knew that everyone will be in trouble if he did. Issei. Goodbye. But that he ran off, ran straight home. When he got there, he heard the others scrambling to get to the club room including his parents. They looked worried and wondered what was going on. As soon as everyone left he entered the house and started to pack his porn for his friends. He packed up a few other things and did what he needed to, he left a letter and a card for his parents in their room. But that done he left. Part 2. Gone. The following gathered in the club room. Team Ria's minus SA, Sarag, Riser, Team Citri, Ravel, Serzichas, Grafia, Serafal, Irina, Michael, Azazel, Ajuka and Asay's parents. They all found in South Dakota card with a note, almost everyone questioned its meaning. Serzichas. What's going on here? Azazel. Issei called this meeting, said it's important and probably why he left his South Dakota card here along with this note. Grafia. What does it say? Azazel. It says play when everyone is together, don't wait for me. This aroused suspicion among everyone. Those whom heard Issei were dead silent, this didn't go unnoticed. Sona. Should we play the video then? Ajuka. Yes, I'm sure the Red Dragon Emperor has very good reason to call a meeting such as this. Azazel pulls out a remote and presses a button, from the roof a TV came out, they connected the two devices. They opened the gallery and found one long video, it had a thumbnail of him just sitting by the fountain in the park. Timestamp. An hour ago. Azazel. I have a bad feeling about this. He pressed play. They see Issei being a bit quiet at first, but then he spoke up. Issei. Everyone I'd like to apologize for suddenly calling you all here. There are some things that have happened a few hours ago. I'll start from the beginning after winning the recent rating game I went out to buy a few things to continue the celebration, my team, Riser, Ravel, Sarag and Saji, continued to party when I got home I saw. Divide. Hearing that word alerted them, why was he using the dividing gear and on what? I saw the aforementioned people sleeping in my bed, broken condoms and liquor bottles littered my room. 
I was betrayed by the Marias, Akeno, Kaneko, Zenobia, Roswas, Asia, Ravel we were in a committed relationship, and I gave my heart and soul to them Saji, Gaspar, Kiba, Sarag and yes even Urizer, we were like brothers, and you slept with my loved ones. I was betrayed twelve times in an instant. It seems the effort to break you out of the marriage has apparently gone to waste Gremory. Everyone look at the guilty party with death glares. They wanted to tear them apart, but didn't interrupt the video as they made, they wanted more answers. Divide. You're all probably wondering about that. Everyone except for my parents know how sacred gears react to strong emotions, especially a long ina such as the boosted gear. When this video ends someone tell my parents the truth about us. They're not devils so don't leave them in the dark sorry I digress. Pause the video if you want. They paused it. His mother spoke up. Mickey. Everyone what is happening? His father then looked at the guilty party. He was filled with rage. His parents looked around, they want answers. Serzichas. We'll give you a crash course, the supernatural, every mythology is real, other than you two, none of us are human. Irina and Michael are angels, the rest of us are devils. Azazel is a fallen angel. They showed them their wings. The two were shocked and took a moment to compose themselves. Boru. And the sacred gears. The Juka. Powerful tools given to humans to fight against or with the supernatural. Issei has one of the long Inus and gears with that title carry power that can challenge gods. They all have different abilities and subspecies, each one has different default abilities, but they change and evolve depending on the host and their emotions. Boru. Okay, let's play the video before I tear those cheaters a new one devils or not. Continue video. The last time I lost control I used the juggernaut drive, and if it was a complete one, then a lot of people would be dead, I still remember it vividly I thought Shalva killed Asia, and I went berserk I nearly killed my team. Divide divide. Now imagine that times 12 the divine dividing being used on a small scale is the only thing that's keeping us alive, I know some will think that no one died, so I have no reason to use that, but put yourself in my place the first woman I loved killed me, Rhea saved my life by turning me into a devil, and things have been he well interesting. Mom dad. You'll get a kick out of this. I fraught devils, fallen angels, stray priests, other sacred gear users, Loki the Norse god of mischief, and his wolf son Fenrir. I nearly died repeatedly during all of that, I fought terrorists and took part in raiding games. You'll know what those events are in time, but you should know that I didn't do all that alone, I had my team by my side. Some of it was fun. Everyone in the room did their part we trained a lot and grew strong both physically and emotionally. We were there for each other I fell in love again with the seven beautiful ladies, and the intern fell for me or at least that's what they led me to believe. Divide divide divide. Until recently Kiba, Gaspar, Sarag and Saji are should I say were by brothers by all means but blood. Riser and I didn't get along at first, but we worked it out. We got along so you're probably wondering about what was in the box. The seven girls started to sob. They say. In the box were seven engagement rings. I wanted to marry them, I love them all equally, and didn't want to upset them after all. Who am I to break their hearts? I hope I don't come off as an arrogant fool. Sniff ha I just wanted to give you the daughters you always wanted mom and dad. I wanted to give you grandkids. It was my dream, but those five bucked and finished inside my dreams ha 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 ha. Sorry I couldn't help myself. I find myself unable to stay on one particular topic my mind is us I disturbed to say the least. So I'm just going to get to the point if I can. Bear with me. Serziches and Grafia, you two are the elder siblings I always wanted and I'm happy about that, I really mean it. I still remember how Grafia scared Serzich's near death when she did some good flip tricks with my butterfly knife with such grace too, speaking of which I want you to have it. I left a few things for some of the people in the room, but more on that later. Serzich's and Seraphal. You two are truly humble, chill and know when to not let things get to you. You're awesome devil kings and yes, you two lord Ajuka. The Say's parents looked at the three with wide eyes, before them are the devil kings and Serzich's wife who scares him shitless. As is all sensei, you were always there to guide me, we played together and fraught together. I enjoyed every moment we spent. You were always there to help us. Divide divide divide. Now on a serious note, I need to get away from here I don't know how long I'll be gone or where I'm going but I need to get away, I know that I'm running away and I'll be marked as a stray sniff ha so surzages, I'm sorry, but you'll need to find someone to take my place as the grabbing dragon character in the show, I know you'll think of something regarding the Chaos Brigade tell the gods of different mythologies to get off their asses and do something. They're all powerful and immortal, might as well make use of that, instead of turning us into cannon fodder. Divide, essay. So many gods and only two teams of low-level amateur devils were sent to fight Loki and his god slaying mutts. I would have died if it wasn't for Ravel giving me that phoenix tear. Thanks Ravel I'm going to miss the sweet cakes we ate together up in the mountains, while well, cock a doodle do riser was a canary being chased by dragons. 
You should open a cafe I'm sure it'll be great. I even thought about a name, the sweet phoenix mom and dad, back at the house I left something for you, a card with access to the money I made on the show I mentioned earlier. You have more money than you'll ever need. Jeff Bezos got nothing on you now Rena, and Lord Michael you two words can't describe how amazing you two are. The very definition of real angels come as close as it can get to you, and it's not enough. Irina you still wished the best for me even I turned into a devil, and I hope you can forgive me for leaving, you never hurt me, and I feel like I'm hurting you. Sniff, but I have to cause if I stay then I'll completely lose it, if I do then I'll be putting you in harm's way. Tell your dad I said hi, and I wish I went to church with you too when you offered when we were kids. I'm going miss you Sai Huff. Team Citri we never got to know much about each other, but I truly respect you as fellow devils, and I miss the volleyball match we had, but not the pain that came with it so now I know you want the best for people, but I'm sorry to disappoint you. Haha. <laughs> I doubt we'll be around to see you and the others make the school for all species. Buck I feel so selfish right now. Divide, I say. I don't know long I can do it or what it'll do to me. Sorry I got off track again, most of you will be glad to know that I'm giving my porn away to my classmates, they'll come by and pick it up. Under my bed where the 12 backstabbers slept is a box. And it is my secret knife collection. Yeah, surprise I have other hobbies haha. <laughs> I leave that to Grafia, Serzichas, Azazel, Serafal, to Cadis and Murayama. Maybe one too from Milicus, I'm sure his mother will teach him to look badass. There are a lot of knives, pick your favorites wow this is a long video. I wish I could give you all something better, but what could I possibly get for you what you don't already have? Seraphal. We just want you to stay with us. Sona hugs her sister. Nearly everyone is in tears. And to the twelve who know what they did, I'm not giving you anything because you've already taken almost everything what matters the most to me. I don't care what you do with the rings, throw them in the bin like a burned cigarette for all I care, they mean nothing to me now, the five cocks can buy you new rings, you might as well marry them, since some of you might be pregnant. Sigh dot. I don't regret renouncing you. He sees the sunrise on the horizon. The light illuminated the tears that he has been shedding for who knows how long. His eyes are bloodshot. He put in so much effort. Mom dad if you still see Asia or the others as the daughters you love and if any of them are pregnant, then congrats on becoming grandparents sorry it's not mine. He speaking of little one someone tell Milicus and Kauno that their elder brother figure won't be around, I can't bear to see them upset. I know Milicus is a tough kid, but Kauno is so young. She might not understand I'm sorry to ask this of you gosh, I feel like a coward. Irina inside the SD card are pictures of us together as kids. I finally found them through tons of photo albums and it brought back so many memories. I yearn for that blissful ignorance this is kind of like my will huh? Ha <laughs> ha. Sigh it's time. Drag anything you want to say. The gauntlet appears. Drag. I do. I would like to say that if I wasn't stuck in this gear, then I would have either burned the soft noodles off of the five cucks or divided them straight out of existence, I'd only need to do it once. Right now I'm using the latter ability to keep us all from dying a death none should suffer except for the cheaters, but my partner won't let it happen. The and I need to get away from all this. My partner went from being a perv to the strongest red dragon emperor in history, he gave his arm for the Gremory girl, accepted the half-fallen even when it was a fallen that killed him in the first place, he was afraid of women, but got over it. Gave the former nun a family but too bad she broke her promise to give him one. Gave the brainless knight Zenovia a better life with the team, helped the white pussy Kaneko accept her heritage as he did with the half-fallen Akeno. He gave you all one hell of a confidence boost especially Gasper. Stopped Kiba from being consumed by revenge. He taught the nun and cat to swim for goodness sake, and as for the Valkyrie, you were the smart one, emotionally mature, so why did you cheat? Don't use being drunk as his excuse. All of you were perfectly sober prior to it, and you could have stopped they say alcohol brings out who you really are. If that's true then all 12 of you had feelings for each other or just wanted to buck, you wanted to throw a real connection out the fifth story window riser. I hope you didn't buck your sister, same to Sarah regarding Ria's, she is your cousin after, you are bucked up. Say didn't choose this life for himself, but embraced it nonetheless now look where you put him. I'm done partner. There's nothing more to say they already know. Tell the white one that our rivalry has ended. I say. Thanks partner mom dad and everyone else I do want to stay, but everything that I endured up to the recent events have taken a bigger toll on me than I anticipated. I need to get away you won't be alone though mom and dad. Almost everyone in the room is with you. You have the big house and all the money you need to enjoy the world. I did my part my duty to everyone. So I am done I have no goal in life now to hell with being a harem king, pfft. What a childish notion, hope you all have a happy life I love almost all of you and I'll miss you sniff take care goodbye. Video end. The display now shows a photo of everyone in the Hayato household together. All the girls around to say and the parents took the photo selfie style. Everyone's reaction varied. 
they saw the man who changed everything be reduced to a shell of a man he once was. Michael prayed for Issei to overcome this, the seven cheaters cried, the five cocks are ashamed of themselves. Not only did they actually betray him, he caught them and now everyone knows. Sona slapped Rhea's heart, her face was as now as red as her hair. Her queen Tsubaki slapped Kiva and she shed a tear or two as well, her lover cheated on her and betrayed Issei. The devil kings including Ajuka are pissed, Grafia coated her hand in a layer of truly freezing ice and slapped them all, they had a literal hand-shaped burn mark on their faces. Sona then bitch slapped Saji. Sona. I'm utterly disgusted by you. Serzich's was now emitting an aura that screams bloody murder. The whole school shook and the students panicked, their screams can be heard very clearly. Michael. Serzich's I know you're angry, we all are but don't scare the students. Let's go look for him and try to help Issei. We'll deal with the 12 heathens later. Serzich's took a deep breath. Serzich's. I'm going out there to look for him. Grafia. I'm coming with you. Sona. I'll stay here with Issei's parents. Subaki. I shall help. I'll tell them the truth. Azizel. Fan out everyone. Find him before it's too late. Michael. Let's go arena arena. She's shaking from rage, her halo is emitting a light that was starting to sting the devils. She pulled out her light sword and held it near their eyes, it was shaking as badly as her, but it didn't matter, as long as it made contact it'll hurt them. She wanted to do it, her wings flickered between black and white, as she wanted to kill them to get revenge for hurting her childhood friend crush. Michael. Irina stop, he immediately restrained her. Irina tried to get out of his grip. Irina. Let me go they hurt him they need to suffer. Michael. Irina we're wasting time here dot dot calm down and help us look for him. He's hurting and he needs us, he needs you. She stopped thrashing and broke down. He comforts the little angel and helps her focus on finding him. Irina. Let's go find him sniff dot. Her wings now remained white. They all leave save for the parents, Sona, her queen, the hoes and the cucks. Sona. Mr and Mrs Hayato. Please come with us to the student council office we'll fill you in on everything. Issei's mother was still shedding tears while his father spoke in a low voice. Oru. When we get home everyone except for Asia better pack your shit and get out. The four of them left the club room, leaving twelve living disgraces alone as they should be. As the four walked towards the student council office, the students looked at them with sad expressions, the reason. Issei's five friends whom he said farewell to were sitting alone crying their hearts out. The girls asked Murayama, Kadis and Aika, while the guys asked Motohama and Mitsuda. They told them that he's going through too much to stay, hurting too much, he just left. They described his tone and his looks, he was broken and tried in vain to put on a brave face, everyone knows how that feels. For the first time everyone felt the same thing empathy. Seeing his parents, Team Rias and several other people enter the orc without a say, made everyone wonder if he was really okay. After half the people left the orc in a panic and in different directions, they knew something had happened to him. Seeing his very upset parents walking with a very upset Tsubaki and livid Sona was enough to prove that something did happen, he either ran away, disappeared etc. The students knew this wasn't related to his perverted antics because the girls felt bad for him, his friends missed him dearly. The orc members still hadn't come out and it was silent. Sona was showing emotion and it was rage. None dared to come near them. Issei was currently in the park, near the fountain. Greg. What now? Issei. A small dimensional rift should do the job. Greg. I though you would go stay somewhere in the Nine Realms. Not leave this dimension. Issei. They'll find me as long as I'm here. Greg. How do we open a dimensional rift? We're not strong enough. Issei. We've been to the dimensional gap, let's teleport into it. Greg. You don't have a magic reserves for that. Issei. Boost whatever magic I have. Greg. I hope it doesn't backfire. Issei. Yeah me too. Let's do it. He summoned the boosted gear, he practiced this spell along with others. He knows how to perform it perfectly, but never had the magic or power but how he does. He created a small teleportation circle and boosted it, it grew bigger and bigger, the increase in power was felt by those who were out looking for him, even the twelve felt it, they got up and ran for it, they wanted to see him again, to apologize, it make it up to him, even it took them the rest of their long lives. Arena was the closest, there wasn't anyone around so she flew to him, she felt his power coming from the park, from the distance she could see a red light. Arena. Issei. He succeeded in creating a portal to the dimensional gap, it opened, and he saw the swirling void of colors. Issei. This is it Dreg. Dreg. I suppose it is. Issei. Shall we? Dreg. Yes. He was about to jump, he felt the others closing in and decided to face them. He turned around and found Office standing there. Office. What are you doing host of Dreg? Issei. I'm leaving office. Office. Why? Issei. It's a long story what are you doing here? Office. You're hurting so much pain underneath. Issei. Sai are you going to stop me? Office. No it's your choice. Issei. 
thank you. The office. May I make a recommendation? He was surprised about that. They say. Sure. The office. There's a world I used to visit called Remnant. It could be a new start for you and Drake. They say. What's it like? The office alters Issei's portal, and he can see a modern civilization, human and what look like demi-humans or human and animal hybrids. Few carry weapons and they speak English. They say. Wow it's nice. The vide. The office. What was that about? They say. I'm suppressing my negativity. So that others aren't hurt by my hands office you helped me thank you. He hugs her and it surprised her. The office. What is this? They say. It's called a hug. Do you dislike it? The office. No it's nice. They say. Glad to hear it hey office don't join the terrorists it's not worth it. The office. Then what do you recommend? He smirked. They say. Start with food. There's movies, shows, stories, friends and family life in general. You love it. There's a cafe nearby, why don't you go there and buy some cake? Here's some cash. He gives her some cash. They say. Take care of yourself office. The office. What about my silence? They say. Peace is the greatest silence. The office. Will there be more hugs? They say. All the hugs you could want. The office mild. The others showed up and watched a bizarre scene. The twelve hoes showed up too, they tried to go to him, but the others stopped them with force. The office. Anything you want to say to them? He looked at most of them and smiled. They say. I already have stay with them office. They'll need you. They'll teach you to enjoy life. The office. Understood my friend. Everyone, Irina. They say. She flies to him and he welcomes her with open arms. They say. I'll be okay. Take care of yourself. Irina. Sniff don't forget about us and if you want to hang out then come back. She lets go and slowly backs away. They say. I will farewell. Goodbye everyone. He waved them goodbye with a smile on his face. The intern waved goodbye. The twelve tried to stop him but they couldn't. Too many powerful people stopping them. He leaned backwards and let gravity do the rest. The portal closed and with that he's gone. Most broke down crying and already miss him. Office stood before them and asked a question. Office. Why is my friend hurting? Part 3. What's left behind? The say left a lot of things for his loved ones back home, his parents were caught up to date and they took it hard. They were truly proud of their son for what he has accomplished, how considerate he is. Eleven out of the twelve were isolated on orders of the Devil Kings, they wanted to talk to them personally. The Say's parents went home with a heavy heart, this big house feels even more empty than ever, they still have Asia, but they haven't forgiven her for what she and the others did. They drove him away. They sat in silence, staring into his room which is still littered with broken condoms and liquor bottles. To the blissfully unaware, this is a scene of hex, booze and fun. To those who truly know about it, it is a scene that destroyed a man. Asia walked over to the bed slowly the sparkle from the seven rings caught her eye, she dare not touch even one of them, because she knows that she has no right to do so. Mitsuda and Motohama came by later, they asked about Issei. Motohama. Someone please tell us what happened to Issei. Oru. He's gone for some time. Mitsuda. For heaven's sake, he was so vague about this, and so is everyone else with all due respect sir please tell us the truth. Oru. Very well I'll make it brief Issei's heart was broken seven times and was backstabbed five times in an instant. Issei is currently on a spiritual journey who knows where he is, I just wish him good luck and godspeed. Mitsuda. And there's no way to tell when he'll return. Oru. I'm afraid not we fear he may never return I wouldn't blame him if he didn't. The two were really upset about that. Their hearts sank. Oru. I'm sorry boys. Mitsuda. It's okay he did say goodbye to us. Mickey. When? Motohama. Early morning in school. He was completely heartbroken. Seeing him out on a fake smile for us hurt a lot. Mickey. Yes yes it did. At least he's out there somewhere trying to heal. I'm sure none of us have the strength to do what he did if we were in his place, since you boys are here, Issei said he left some things for you both. Motohama. Oh right he did. Oru. Come on, he's left it inside for two. They enter the house, and the two go to pick up what Issei left for them. The porn felt meaningless without having him around to enjoy it with. They took a few minutes to compose themselves. They picked up the stuff and were leaving until they noticed his parents packing up a bunch of stuff. Mitsuda. Please let us help. Oru. We appreciate it boys thank you. The four start packing up stuff from different rooms. They quickly figured out that most of the stuff belonged to women, mainly the seven girls that moved into this house, they left Asia's things as they were, they passed by Issei's room, and the door was slightly open. They saw a glimpse of the tragic scene, Asia kneeling by the bed crying, bottles and broken condoms littered the room. The shine from the seven small objects caught their attention the most they couldn't help but get a closer look. They saw seven engagement rings with colors that matched the women they were meant for. They looked at Asia the stuff they packed, Issei suddenly leaving they connected the dots the women cheated on him all at once. 
they wanted to comfort the crying nun, but ultimately decided against it she's clearly among those who hurt him and drove him away. They helped out his parents and when they were done. Mitsuda. If you ever need any help then let us know. Motohama. We're only one call away. Bo thanked the boys and they left, Issei's parents spent the remaining time at home with Asia in utter silence. They didn't say a word to Asia or even look at her, she didn't know what to say to them either. After a few hours Azazel, the three devil kings, Grafia, Irina and Michael, showed up with a guest. The parents are surprised by the young girl. Michael. MR and MRS Hayato. Meet office, the dragon of infinity. One of the two dragons that none dared to anger. They backed away, she may look unassuming, but Sona did let them know who the true powerhouses are. Goru. And dot nice to meet you. I'm Goru. Mickey. And dot dot I'm I dot I'm Mickey. Office. You're Issei's parents. Goru. Yes how did you know? Office. You look like him he's my friend. Mickey. Do you know where he is? Office. I do. Worry not he's safe, but please tell me why he wished to leave not just his home but this dimension. Serzichas. We should take a seat. Office. Can we get cake? I ate the last slice in the cafe. It was sweet I like sweets. After they sit down, Office is informed as to what happened to Issei. She was angry, so much so that her aura flared for a split second, but it was enough to shake the whole town for five seconds. After eating some more cake she calmed down. Asia was listening in on the conversation when Office started to talk about where she sent Issei. Office. Let's get down to it. I sent Issei to a world called Remnant. Modern civilization, advanced tech etc. Graphia. Why Remnant? Office. It's a place I know well. He'll be fine. He doesn't need anyone or anything reminding him of his second life. After everything he has done, he deserves a real life he can meet new people that may be able to help him if he ever lets anyone in that is. Azazel. Why do you doubt it? Office. He used the juggernaut drive when he though he lost one of his mates whom is currently listening to us. She is among those who hurt him after everything he did, he may not wish to feel anything ever again. Asia wasn't surprised that she knew she was there. She didn't dare to come out of the room. Office. Moving on, last night he lost all seven to other males whom he trusted. Azazel. But they aren't dead. He's not going to use the juggernaut drive, he's already surpassed it. Office. That's what makes him more dangerous. Bear with me, he sacrifices again and again, did what none have achieved such as go beyond the juggernaut drive for those he loves. Those loved ones betrayed him, broke their promise to him. Twelve people broke him in an instant. He's using whatever self-control he has to stop himself from using that power and killing them, such betrayal breeds nearly unstoppable rage in dragons, and thus triggering a vicious cycle of death and carnage. I commend his choice to choose a path with no blood being shed. I'm happy to call him a friend and as his friend I'll help you stop the Chaos Brigade. Everyone was silent, Issei was just praised by the Dragon of Infinity. Boru. I'm beyond proud of him a toast to Issei. A young boy who solved the problems of adults. Everyone raised their glasses. Issei. Azazel. Office thank you for helping us maintain peace. Office. Glad I can help. Asia then came into the room. Asia. Office would you let us see him? Office. You don't deserve it. You have no right to even request such a thing. She backed away with tears welling up in her puffy eyes. Office. What's your name? Asia. It's Asia. Argento. Office. So you're the one he's protective of the most. Arena. He let her stay as she has no other place to go. Office. Drake has a compassionate host. Angel. Arena. Yes. Office. He's okay, he's currently in a place called Beacon Academy, there are warriors in training there, and he already surpassed them, he'll be fine. Michael. But what about his emotional state? Office. He's dividing his negative emotions. His judgment won't be impeded, and you should hope that it stays that way. If he ever loses control then instead of dividing he may boost continuously, it'll be far too much for him. Mickey. And if he does. Office. I'll step in. Everyone smiled. Time skipped to when Ika, Kadis and Murayama show up, Azazel finds a big box of knives under Issei's bed, and they lay them out. Arena. Issei told us to distribute his collection. He wanted you three to pick any one blade for yourself. The three didn't know Issei had a knife collection, none but Grafia did. Ika picked out the cleaver, Cadiz picked the black folding trench knife, and Murayama picked the green karambit. Grafia picked the butterfly knife, Serzichas picked the red karambit for himself, and the multicolored karambit for his son, as per Issei's request. Michael picked a two-pointed ring, Irina picked the biggest knife second image. Ajuka picked the dual blade. Serafal picked the multicolored knife. Azazel took the black karambit. Office picked out a ring. Seeing the rings made Asia cry again, she feels like she should be punched by them. The rest of the collection was distributed to Team Citri Minasaji. His parents didn't want anything to do with the collection. Office. 
He's a man with good taste in knives, where are the five false brothers and unfaithful lovers? Azazel. What are you going to do with them? Office. They shall pay retribution but not with their lives. They take her to the eleven out of twelve who betrayed us say, they were chained up in a dungeon. Office. You hurt my friend. They looked up and are petrified from fear, as before them stood office. Serg. Yes we did. Asper. But we didn't mean to. Office. Shut up. She raised her voice, they started to get really nervous. Office. Tell me do you regret what you did? Everyone. Yes. Office. Then allow me to carry out your punishment. Worry not, you'll all live. Continue to live your lives, but you'll never be able to make such a mistake again. Brace yourselves. She created eleven snakes, five coiled themselves around the guy's dicks and latched on. The remaining six went inside the women's pussies and into their wombs. They screamed from the pain and stopped when the pain did. Akeno. What did you do to us? Office. Your punishment, should you ever try to buck anyone ever again, then my snakes will kill the person you are with. You can't have children unless I allow it, or unless Isaiah requests it and there's a low chance of that happening. I have yet to decide if Asia should be punished as well my friend still cares for her side. She looks at them with disgust. He eyes fell upon Kaneko. They locked eyes. Office. Your sister would be disappointed she should know what her little sister has done. Kaneko started crying again. Office just left them there to cry till their tears run dry. She went back to the Chaos Brigade where she encountered Rizavim Lucifer, Cow Cow, a still alive Shalba with bionic limbs, Diehauser Belial A.K. of the No.1 rating game champion and many others. Rizavim? Oh there you are Office. Ready to cause some chaos. Office. I am. She released thousands of snakes upon everyone in an instant and killed them all. It was a massacre. No one but her survived. She called the Devil Kings, Azazel and Michael who showed up in a few minutes, they didn't expect to see such a bloodbath. After compassing themselves they looked through Rizavim's files. He had planned an evil dragon army and creating super devils as a start, his main goal was to awaken the beast 666 and control it as if it was a familiar. They found where the beast was laying dormant, right within the Agar's stadium. So much carnage avoided in an instant. Michael. Office how can we ever thank you? Office. He said you can show me what life has to offer. Azazel. You mean to say? She nodded. Azazel. Yes yes we can. Did he tell you where to start? Office. Food and hugs. I like hugs. Seraphal immediately hugged her, right now she didn't give a damn if Office is the dragon of infinity that just killed the entire chaos brigade without effort. The others were terrified if she disliked such a bold action, but to their relief she hugged back. Office. I feel warm inside. They all share a laugh. But they say. He went through a portal and is currently falling. They say. Ah what the hell. Greg. You have wings you idiot. He sprouts his devil wings and flies to safety. He lands near a place what looks like a castle of sorts. I say. I wonder where I am. Here Beacon, the best huntsman and huntress training academy in all of Remnant. He turn around and face the voice, a man wearing a black and green suit, gray hair, small glasses, he carried a cane and a coffee mug. I say. Who are you? My name is Professor Osborne, and I'm the headmaster of this prestigious academy. Who may I ask are you young man? I say. I'm Issei Hayato. Nice to meet you Professor. Osborne. Likewise, Mr. Hayato. Your name is unique I must say. Issei. I'm not from around here sir. Osborne. Are you from Atlas? Menagerie perhaps. You're a bat faunas. Issei. Shit I forgot to hide my wings. Greg. Worry not, he called you a faunas, he thinks you're one of those demi-humans we saw before coming here. Issei. Will you? Thanks partner. Dot. Osborne. Mr. Hayato. Are you alright? Issei. Huh? Sorry I zoned out I haven't been myself recently could you repeat your question? Ozpin. I ask if you're from Menagerie. Issei. I am. I'm a bat faunas. Ozpin. It seems he's hiding something or he lacks common knowledge. Or both. I'll have to keep my eye on him. Ozpin. So Mr. Hayato were you planning on joining Beacon? Issei. I'm not sure. I don't have any documents on me or the money to join. Ozpin let out a small chuckle. Ozpin. I'm the headmaster of this academy. I'll give you the papers you need and money isn't needed. You need skill and the goal to protect the innocent. Do you have any identification? I'll need something to go on. Issei pulls out his ID card. Osborne. I've never seen an ID card like this. Where are you really from young man? Issei. It's a long story sir. Osborne. Young man I've got nothing but time. Follow me to my office. Issei. Yes headmaster. Part 4. New start. Osborne. So let me see if I got this right. You left your home with the help of your friend because you were forced into a life of pain, fighting, loss and death. 
I can understand that, but I still have some concerns, for example, your ID card is in a foreign language, one I've never seen or heard of. It is suspicious, but I can you're just trying to have a better life. You're not the type to lie without a good reason. So, I'll keep this between us. I say. Thank you, sir and yes. That's my life in a nutshell. I did my part while those in power did little to nothing they need to do their fair share and there was a lot of heartache. I just couldn't bear it anymore. Osbin. Listen I say, may I call you I say? I feel like we have moved past formalities. I say. I'd prefer that you do. Osbin. All right then I say, I thank you for cooperating, but your story is still very vague. I say. There's a lot that I left behind and it should stay there. I don't know enough to share everything professor. Osbin. Yes, that's completely understandable. I say. So what's your story? Osbin. Ah yes, well there's not much to my story. I'm a man who just wishes to guide the next generation of warriors to keep people safe. I say. He's lying Dreg. Dreg. Partly lies. That look in his eyes he knows and has done more things that shouldn't be possible at his age. I say. Those eyes carry experience. And a lot of it. I say. Good so what do you train the warriors for exactly? I know absolutely nothing about this world. Osbin. Well I say, once your ID card along with your transcripts are done, you'll have access to the library here and much more. You'll know everything you would need. If I may ask, what kind of device is that? The asked about is say smartphone. I say. A smartphone, it's mainly a communication device, you can have access to knowledge from any part of the globe, share messages, images, videos, documents etc. Osbin. Interesting. We have a familiar device called scrolls. He shows I say his scroll. I say. Advanced technology and remnant. Osbin. Due to the differences in technology, your smartphone might not be compatible. If you'd like then we can get our guys to reverse engineer it. I say. Sounds good. I forgot to bring my charger in my sudden decision. I say was later issued a scroll, a charger for it which works on his phone too, the contents of his phone were copied to his scroll. His music, photos of family and friends are in it, he was issued a small dorm for the time being and was planning on looking for work, but to his surprise, Osbin said that hunters in training are funded by the government, each student gets an allowance. He was currently in his dorm learning how to use his scroll which he did easily since it's like his old phone, he kept that phone safe and sound. He powered it off since won't be using it. Greg. So partner, any idea on how we can learn about this new world? I say. I'm looking up the information now. I say. They kept their history brief, saves time. Greg. These grim and semblances are intriguing. You never know what you're gonna get. I say. No kidding and it's really rare to get two semblances. Dust is quite unique, if Azazel was here he'd lose his mind. Greg. That old crow would test on everyone with a semblance. Dust then Isaiah received a message from Osbin. Initiations will be held tomorrow morning for first year students. You'll be a part of it and have to pass a trial like everyone else, can't show favoritism Isaiah. My assistant Miss Goodwitch will have my head if I did. I say. Greg. Something wrong? I say. Large castle-like academy, Osbin Glinda Goodwitch office, sent us to a more grim version of a children's story. Greg. That's office for you she went from being a terrorist to friend and sent you to a fairy tale also that was a crappy pun. I say. Gotta do something to keep my spirits up. Greg. Partner please seek help you can't suppress your negative feelings forever, Grim are attracted to that, and should those feelings leak out, then it'll be dangerous for everyone including you. I say. Yeah, you're right. But I'm glad I came here we haven't divided that much since we left. Greg. True but still. It's a good start. I say decided to go out to explore Vale. He found dust shops, food stalls that have western dishes just like back on earth. He saw people carrying weapons, some were ordinary such as spears, swords, crossbows, guns etc, but some looked unique, he saw a group of what he assumed are hunters showing off their weapons. He saw one man change his gun into a sword, he saw multicolored ammo cartridges tied to his belt. I say. Dust ammo and transforming weapons, very innovative. Greg. As if we need that, we have the gear, Ascalon, balance breaker and promotions. I say. Ascalon will be our primary weapon, can't go around using balance breaker and promotions, it'll attract too much attention, if Atlas is as they say it is then we can't risk it. Greg. Hm dot dot you're right. It'll be in case of emergencies only. Now what should our semblance be? I say. I've been thinking about that. Why limit ourselves completely? We can say that the gauntlet is a tool that helps manipulate my semblance. Greg. Such as. I say. Boosting it, dividing it and transferring it. We could try that with dust, since I can barely manage to light a cigarette. Dust then he got a flashback of everyone in that room. Divide. Greg. Breath partner they can't hurt you anymore. They say. Yeah I know but the damage is done. Dot. I'm skipped to the next day.
the Sei kept Ascalon on his back and the boosted gear ready just in case. He was standing among those new first-year students, he then heard an explosion and saw a girl with a red cape getting reprimanded by some white-haired girl with a snowflake symbol in her back. The Sei. Must be from the Shni family. Then a black-haired girl with a big bow on her head stopped the argument and left. The red-caped girl then started going all fangirl on everyone's weapons. They say. Wow she really loves weapons. Greg. Almost as much as you love porn haha. Ha. They say. Ha. Ha. Very funny. I kick that habit remember. Greg. Now kick the habit of smoking. They say. An announcement was made. All first-year students report to the auditorium. They followed as the stern, loud feminine voice demanded. Everyone was in the auditorium within minutes. A woman wearing a purple cape, glasses, a boob window top and hair ties and a bun spoke up. Woman. Welcome to Beacon Academy, I'm Professor Glinda Goodwitch, I'll be teaching you combat. The other professors introduced themselves, a short chubby yet happy fellow with a nice mustache is Professor Port, he's in charge of grim studies and anatomy. Next is Dr. Oblick, tall, thin, fast talker and movements as fast as a knight. Probably because of the amount of coffee he drinks from that two-foot-long mug. Ozpin finally showed up and gave a small speech. For the rest of the day Issei walked around Beacon and saw his soon-to-be classmates. He saw the same three girls from before along with a blonde bombshell. A couple of fronds here and there, a few arrogant pricks he would love to break, he saw a hyperactive redhead with a silent and calm fellow. They are polar opposites but as they say, opposites attract. There's a redhead that looked like a Spartan, he though he saw Ria's for a split second. Divide. But he snapped out of it, a blonde guy with a sword and shield who looks a little overwhelmed, yet he's trying to court the Shni girl. Issei. She ain't worth it dude dot. The next day, all the students went through physical training, and the herd was thinned out, some didn't meet the physical requirements, Issei passed with flying colors, and so did the others, though the blonde guy just barely made it. He reminded him of Kiba only more goofy, bad luck with the ladies, and complete lack of training. The number of people has been reduced to half. Issei was standing alone then Osbin showed up. Osbin. Are you adapting to the changes? Issei. I am. Osbin. You're worried about something. Issei. I saw huntsmen outside of Beacon, there are usually between two to four of them together. Ozpin. We have teams that consist of four members usually. Issei. Please don't put me on a team. I'm not like the people here and it'll be dangerous for all. Ozpin. I understand but piece of advice. It's good to have a partner. Issei. I have one. Ozpin. Will I ever get to meet him or her? Issei. In time you'll meet him. Ozpin. Very well. See you tomorrow at the cliffs. He walks away. Issei. See you there way cliffs. Ah well dot dot I can fly. Next day. The remaining students are on a cliff overlooking a forest, there are a number of platforms. Ozpin. Quick explanation, all of you are to retrieve an artifact each and bring it back here. Avoid or kill any grim that stand in your way, the next person you make eye contact with will be your partner for the next four years. Prepare your landing strategy. Any questions? The blonde boy raised his arm. Blonde boy. Yes sir, what did you mean by landing? Ozpin. Launch. He was cut off by being launched off the platform, Issei saw him scream like a little girl, he was falling like a rag doll. Issei. Accurate physics. Dot. He and the other students were launched next, Issei flew through the air using his devil wings. He saw the Spartan throw her spear towards the blonde guy, and it caught him by his hoodie, it pierced a tree and saved his life, the blonde girl was zipping through the air, using her shotgun gauntlets to propel her. The red cape girl turned into a swarm of petals and flew down, she hit a bird. Girl. Birdie no. Issei sweat dropped. She unfolded her weapon into a scythe and planted her feet on the base of the blade. She fired off a few rounds so the recoil can reduce her speed. She landed safely, the Shni created glyphs that reminded Issei of magic circles. The ninja and the hyper red head with a hammer are nowhere to be seen. Issei. Oh well. I'm sure they are fine. Issei landed and wanted to walk for a bit, he saw Grim, a two-headed massive serpent being taken down by the hyper and the ninja. Issei. They won't last a second against a Midgard serpent. Dot. He followed the two into a clearing and saw what looked like ruins, there on display are the artifacts that look like chess pieces. Issei. Sai HMP. He walked over and heard not one but two girlish screams. Issei. I recognize one of those. He looked up and saw the Shni girl being carried by a large bird like Grim called a Nevermore. Then he sees the Spartan running with a giant scorpion aka a death stalker with a blonde goof holding on to its stinger. Issei. He's either really stupid or really brave. The goofball screamed again. Issei. Really stupid dot. The others later showed up. Red cape. Weiss jump. The address is the Schnee girl now named Weiss. Weiss. I'll die you dolt. Issei. Just shoot it. Red cape. Who are you? Issei. The name's Issei now are you gonna shoot it or not? Red cape. 
I might hit wise. I say. Try aiming for the joints in the wings. It'll force it to land. Red cape. Good idea. She aims her scythe rifle and fires, it injured the Nevermore and forced it to descend. The Spartan, Ninja and the Hyper Girl take down the Scorpion while the blonde was launched into a tree, he landed on a branch, and just above him is the Nevermore the Red Cape Girl shot again, it let go off Weiss, and she started falling, the blonde guy leapt off of the branch and caught her. He hit the ground hard with her on top of him. They say. Ouch. You too okay? Blonde guy. I grunts think so. You okay Snow Angel? Weiss immediately gets off of him. Weiss. I'm fine I could've landed on my own. They say. Then why didn't you? Weiss. I well. He interrupted me. They say. He stopped you from having your kneecaps go through your eye sockets be grateful, keep up this arrogant shit, and none will save you. Weiss. Who do you think you are talking to me like that? They say. Who do you think you are? Weiss. Weiss Schnee, heiress to the Schnee Dust Company. They say. Take that away and what are you? Weiss. Well. I'm I. They say. Just what I thought. Screek. The Nevermore was back up and started flying. It healed quickly. They say. Out here, your name means nothing, skill and teamwork does. Blonde girl. Dude you didn't have to go off on her like that. They say. Yes I did, don't be a simpleton, we have incoming. The Nevermore flapped its wings and fired a tone of projectile feathers that could do some serious damage. Issei flew out of the way. The others dodged. Spartan. He's right. We need to work together. Everyone except Issei. Right, Issei. You guys are good. Your teamwork came quite naturally. Weiss. Thanks. We knew we could. Blonde guy. We wouldn't have minded if you helped out. Issei. Sorry, I didn't want to get in the way. I'm Issei Hayato. Weiss. I'm Weiss Schnee. Black-haired girl. Blake Belladonna. Spartan. Peronikos. Blonde guy. John Ark. Short, sweet, rolls right off the tongue, and the ladies love it. Issei. Well ladies, do you? None responded except Weiss with a thumbs down. Pura gave a small smile. Issei. Ladies and gentlemen we have reached a verdict. John sulked. Lon Bombshell. Poor vomit boy. Issei. Context. Lon Bombshell. Motion sickness, he puked on the bullhead that brought us here yesterday. I'm Yang Xiaolong, but you can call me whenever you want. Issei's eyes twitched, she reminded him of a gender-bent riser. A little bit of arrogance is clear for all to see. Issei. Hmm. Sorry Jailbit. I'm good. Blake. F for respects. Yang's eye twitches from the rejection. Issei's tone was somewhat polite, but his face displayed mild annoyance. Ninja. Okay so moving on. I'm Lai Ren, and the happy girl next to me is Nora. 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 Red cape. And I'm Ruby Rose. Yang's younger sister. Issei. You two look nothing alike. Yang. Yeah we get that all the time, we're actually half-sisters. Issei. Alright then so let's get the artifacts and get going. Ruby. Sure. He then noticed her silver eyes. Issei. You have silver eyes. Ruby. Yeah they say it's rare. Blake. Something wrong Ruby. Ruby. No it's just that Osborne said the exact same thing to me about my eyes. It's the very first thing he said actually. Yang. Are you or Osborne trying to hit on my sister? Cause if you are I lend you both. Hura. Yang, he meant it platonically, like Ruby said they are rare, and rare things catch one's attention. They say. Everyone wants a glimpse of such a rare sight. Puns intended. Both sisters' eyes widened, Yang's in joy, while Ruby's in horror. Ruby. Not another one. Yang. A double pun hello new best friend. She immediately pulled his head into her chest and swung him round and round. Issei tried to get out of her grip, but she's crazy strong when she's happy. He wonders if she'll be a good sparing partner when she's serious. He got out of her grip and regained his balance. Yang. Oh. Didn't like how they feel. Everyone facipums. Issei. I felt bigger and better. Weiss. Pervert. Issei. You're just jealous she's got what you can't buy. Greg. It's funny cause it's true ha 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 dot. They all look at Yang. She was stunned from the passive aggressive comments, while Weiss turned red from embarrassment and anger. Yang. I let that double insult slide because you made a good dual pun joke. Can't say you'll make it out alive after you just burned the ice queen though. They say. Oh no dot dot anyway let's grab the artifacts and get going. They walk towards the ruins where they first found them. Blake moved closer to Issei who was at the back. Blake. Hey. Issei. Yeah. Blake. Are you a front or are the wings your semblance? He spreads his wings. She looks at them with a bit of relief. Issei. Not a semblance. Why do you ask? Blake. Oh um it's just that you look more human than a bat front is. Issei. I only have the wings, not the echolocation. I'm half front as you can say. Blake. Interesting. People are either just one or the other. He looks at her eyes and they appear cat-like almost, he saw her bow twitch. Issei. 
Biology is complex Blake I'm just happy I have my physical health, Blake. Why did he specifically say physical? No I shouldn't pry in his personal affairs, Blake. I was only making sure. I just want to know who my potential teammates are, I say. Your team is right there in front on you Blake and these wings tell me what I am but not who I am, Blake. Wow I never thought about it that way, I say. Remember it, kitty cat, Blake. They gave her a smile and walked along with the others. They all picked random pieces, Issei looked around and found one he's familiar with. A pawn piece. He held it and lets a few tears flow. Divide. Greg. Why a pawn piece partner? Issei. It's one of the only things I'm familiar with Drake plus all the other pieces are already taken. Greg. Hmm. They take a piece each, Issei flies up and sees the cliff. He lands next to the others. Issei. The cliff is that way. Ren. Let's get going then. Nora. Let's get pancakes. A few beolds appear. The eight prepared to fight, but Issei got in front of them. Issei. Let me. Hura. You sure? Issei. Yeah they're after me. This made everyone curious, but that shifted to bewilderment when Issei cut down the Grim in a few seconds using Ascalon like they were nothing. There he stood Ascalon in hand, the Grim disintegrating his face showing no emotions, but the Grim targeted him specifically. This garnered worried looks from them. Issei took a deep breath. Issei. Let's go. They followed after him. They reached the cliffs after a while. Ozpin. Good timing. Congratulations on making it through the trial. You nine and others who passed the test are officially Beacon students. They all cheered, Issei just smiled. Ozpin. We'll be announcing the team soon. Go wait in the auditorium. They start walking, but Issei was stopped by Ozpin. Issei. Sir. Ozpin. Issei we noticed the Grim targeted you are you alright? Issei. Sigh no sir. I'm not. Ozpin. Issei I recommend you seek help. If it gets worse then there will be too many Grim after you. It'll endanger you and others. Issei. My partner said the same thing. Ozpin. And he's right. Greg smiled. Ozpin. We have a therapist, you should see him. Issei. I'll think about it. Ozpin. See to it that you do. Issei. Thank you sir. He starts walking, in the distance he can see the eight walking, he has a few flashbacks. Per reminds him or Rhea's cause of her red hair. John remind him of Kiba in a way, Yang's flirtatious nature, blonde hair and primary use of fire dust shots, remind him of Rise or one of the bastards that slept with his now former lovers. Blake's golden cat-like eyes, stoic expression remind him of Kaneko and her sister Kuroka. Ren, Nora are okay, Weiss needs to get off her high horse and chill, if not then she'll die faster than John, he brings strategy and quick thinking to the team. What does Weiss bring? Dust. Ruby on the other hand reminds him of Asia a little bit. Young and innocent. Greg. They are not them partner, Issei. I know but they do carry similarities it just reminds me of them, Greg. News flash partner they are humans and faunas. Not devils or fallen or yaokai, it doesn't matter. They all bleed the same, think and feel the same, you're no exception, and nor am I, Issei. Greg. They share similarities yes but just one or two. They aren't an exact copy. Look past it and if you can't then stay away. You don't want to take your anger out on them when they did nothing wrong. They aren't the only ones in Remnant. You don't have to be with them all the time. No one is forcing you, Issei. Yeah you're right, Greg. Seek help Issei. You were never ashamed to ask for it back in our dimension. Don't be afraid now, Issei. No promises, Greg. I know. Go see which teams they'll be a part of. In the auditorium, Ozpin. The following are the teams. Team CRDL lead by Cardin Winchester, Issei. The arrogant shit dot. Team RWBY. Lead by Ruby. Yang was proud to have her as the leader, Blake was indifferent, Weiss was pissed that she should have been the leader, but when Issei gave her the death glare, she kept quiet. Team JNPR lead my John. He went pale, but his teammate supporting him is a good sign. The other teams are CFVY, ABRN, SSSN. There weren't any other students that made the cut so Issei was alone. He was later kept as a helping member on any team during missions. Issei had dinner by himself in his dorm. The next morning he woke up to get breakfast, he made it to the cafeteria, and he was tackled by Yang of all people. Issei wasn't phased in the slightest. Yang. Good morning my new best friend you're pretty sturdy. Issei. Thanks. I train just like everyone else. Yang. Come have breakfast with us. He remembers what Drake told him yesterday. Issei. Sure sounds good. They enjoyed breakfast and seeing Nora devour pancakes as if it was air made him a plotter, she ate six stacks so she deserves that much. Issei. Hey I just remembered. Nora I never got your last name. Nora. It's Valkyrie. Issei was stunned. Greg. Damn you office. Ruby. You okay there Issei? You looks like you had a flashback. He snapped out of it. Issei. 
No no, it's just that she's a combination of two beings of legends I heard about back home. Nora. Really? Do tell. Is say. Question, is your semblance related to electricity? Nora. Gasp. How did you know? Is say. Of course it is, well the two beings are Thor and the Valkyries. Thor is a god that uses a hammer and controls lightning, like you he's a redeed. He's the son of the All-Father Odin aka the King of the Norse Gods. The Valkyries are the personal guards of Odin. An all-women warrior squad that are in a league of their own. For all we know that you might be a love child between the two. Ahahaha. <laughs> Nora had stars in her eyes, and everyone shared a laugh while nodding in agreement. They then heard a yelp. They see Cardin bullying a bunny Franus. He was pulling on her ears. Issei immediately stood up and walked towards him. Bunny. Let me go it hurts. Pardon. Haha <laughs> but they are so soft. Let me cut them off and keep them, then you'll pass as human. Issei. Let her go. Pardon turns towards Issei. Pardon. Or what? Issei. Or those will be the last words you ever mutter. He lets go of the girl and stands up. Pardon. Who do you think yo? In an instant Issei pressed his jugular vein between his gauntlet claws, if he wanted, he could make him bleed out before his aura could heal him. Issei. I'm the one who'll make you suffer, I don't tolerate bullies, if you hurt her or any other one, human or faunas, then I'll make an example out of you. Harden's team immediately stood up. Dove. Hey you can't just. Issei. Shut your mouth boy. The entire cafeteria was silent. Issei. This is your only warning. I'm going to give you one chance to apologize to her run. Got it. His eyes flashed green and let out a low growl. Harden's team sat down like obedient pups. Issei let Harden go and he got angry. Harden. Are you one of them? Are you a Faunas? Issei spreads his devil wings. Issei. Faunas. No. I'm a devil and I love to punish sinners. Now leave people alone Kum Tinner be damned. Harden panicked as he saw Issei show his aura. It was frightening. Harden. I. I'll. I'll get you for this. The four fools leave and Issei calmed down. He folded his wings and looked around, everyone looked like deers caught in the headlights of an 18-wheeler. Issei. Greg. Awkward. Issei. What? Everyone burst into roars of encouragement and cheers. Aye. Way to go dude. Someone else begins whistling. Issei felt a little embarrassed. The bunny front has tapped his shoulder. He turned around and was enveloped by a hug. Bunny. Thank you thank you thank you thank you. Issei. Happy to help miss. Bunny. Velvet Scarlatina. Issei. I'm Issei Hayato. He didn't hurt you, right? Velvet. No, I'm okay thanks to you. Proud. Oh, Velvet turned red and she let him go, Issei didn't have the mutual embarrassed feeling however. Issei. Alright, good. Enjoy your breakfast with your team. He turned to leave, but she grabbed his hand. Velvet. Dude you just threatened Cardin and his team. They'll be gunning for you, possibly they might gun you down literally. Issei. How did racists even get in Beacon? Velvet. No idea. Issei. Well thanks for the heads up. I'll be keeping an eye on them. Velvet gives him a quick smooch on his cheek. Velvet. Consider that as a thank you. Issei. And I accepted humbly. Crowd. Woo. Issei. Well, take care Velvet. Velvet. Ditto. They part ways. She goes to eat her breakfast and Issei walks towards his friends. John. Dude that was intense. Issei. I just really hate people who hate others without proper cause. Nora. I would have broken his legs. Issei. You can do that if he bullies anyone again. I leave and help. Ren. Please don't encourage her. Issei. She means well. Nora. Yaren, I mean well. He sighs in defeat. Yang. So are we going to talk about Cardin's new name? Blake snickered more than the others. Issei. You mean Kung Tin. Well he's a broken condom wearing tin armor so. They burst into laughter, Weiss let out a small snort, and Ren cracked a smile. Ring. Pura. We should get to class. In class with Professor Port, he's telling another story of his youth. Half the class is asleep, but Issei is just listening to pass the time. Any questions he suddenly asks why seems to know the answer. Next class is with Goodwitch. Linda. Alright class, you've had time to sleep, eat and study about Grimm. Who cares to fight one? Hera, Nora, Weiss, Yang and a few other random students raise their hands. She looks around and picks Ruby. Linda. Miss Rose, care to show us how to effectively kill an Ursa? Issei. Bear Grimm? This should be good. Ruby? Yes ma'am. She steps forwards and readies her weapon Crescent Rose. Glinda opens the cage, and a small Ursa comes out. It looks at Ruby and gets ready to attack, then it stopped, it slowly turned towards Issei and let out a growl. It immediately pounced and in an instant it was cut clean in half, it turned to black ash before it even hit the ground. They look to see Issei standing down below with Ascalon in his hand. Issei. Everyone alright. They nod, their faces show how amazed they are by his abilities. Issei. I'll take that as a yes. He goes back to his seat. Linda. 
Oh okay so dot dot moving on. Good demonstration. They continue the lesson and it's eventually lunch time. John. Hey say. They say. Yeah. John. Could you teach me how to be as good as you? They say. Afraid not John. I'm not really much of a teacher. He then noticed Pura gazing at John with a light blush. They say. I would recommend you ask Pura, she's the type who wants to help her team. John. Oh alright. They say. Sorry John. I tend to take training too seriously, thus my current skill. John. All cool man. They say. Thanks. Greg. I didn't have to divide once today, he controlled his emotions on his own. They sit together and talk. They say. So what kind of semblances do you guys have? Ren. I can mask my emotions, and at least one person I'm in physical contact with, basically Grim can't see us. Weiss. My family members have the exact same semblance. They say. I saw some of that when you guys fought the Nevermore. You can use those to either increase gravity or repel something or someone. Weiss. That's just two of the things we can do. They say. We look forward to seeing it in the future. Nora. The more you zap me, the stronger I become. John. I haven't found mine yet. Yang. The more damage I take, the more I can dish out, my hair catches on fire with it, but it never burns. Lake. I can create illusions of myself and even infuse them with dust. Pura. I can manipulate magnetism. What about you? They say. That's where this gauntlet comes in, it helps me control how much power I can take away, transfer, increase, be it my own or someone else's. I've been thinking about using dust in it for that I need information. Weiss. Weiss. Why dot yes. They say. You're an experienced dust user, I could use your expertise. Weiss. Oh, I'm sure. There are a thing or two that aren't mentioned in books. They say. Alright then Professor Schnee. Can you teach me after class? Weiss. Sure but what do I get out of it? They say. I'll make you dinner. She blushed. Weiss. Why you I'll one of these days hi out oh one of these days I'll stick my rapier up your ass. They say. Kinky but take it out of your ass first. Yang. Oh schneet, Ruby. Swear jar both of you, everyone else just laughs. Part 5. Getting to know each other. Later that day, Issei trained with Weiss regarding dust. She gave some of her ice dust since it's her number one favorite. Weiss. Okay so little known fact, when unleashed, the large amount of ice isn't coming from the dust, but it combines with the gases in the environment such as nitrogen, it has an endothermic reaction and creates the ice. It also depends on the temperature of the environment and moisture. They say. So the element have to be within their elements for max output. Weiss. Precisely you can even add your aura to it for boosted effect although it's difficult. They say. Boosted effects huh? Give me a small piece of dust. She hands him one piece and the eight watch what he's up to. He held it in his gauntlet. Boost. They heard a voice come from the gauntlet. Transfer. Another word, same voice. Lake. What the? He shows the piece of ice dust now doubled in size, and it's almost glowing. He clenched his gauntlet. They say. Ice shot. He fired off a blue orb from his gauntlet towards some trees, and it froze 300 sq feet of forest. Eight jaws nearly hit the dirt, the air was cold, and the ice attracted some gazes from people nearby. They say. Fire dust next. Weiss. And burn the forest down. Hell no just cause you're good with dust doesn't mean you should get cocky. They say. The pot calling the kettle black. Ruby. Weiss did you just compliment him? Yang. Ice Queen complimented our new Ice King Oshni. Weiss. Sia say I'll take you up on your dinner offer if you can get Yang to stop making puns. John felt kind of down seeing his crush agree to have dinner with his friend. They say. That's like asking her to stop breathing so nope. Weiss. I'll give you half my allowance. They say. Nope. Weiss. Damn it Sai let's move along. It's getting cold. Yang. Oh come on Weiss, chill out. Weiss. Death glare dot. They say. Okay guys, everyone just cool off. Yang high fives him. Weiss. Sleep with one eye open. Ruby. Let's talk about something other than ice cold murder. Yang. My little sister made a pun. Weiss. Kill me kill me now. Pura. It's not so bad Weiss. So anyone want to get dinner in Vale? They say. Why go there? I can cook. John. I'll help ya. I have seven sisters so I picked up a few things. Ren. I'll help out. Nora. Pancakes. Lake. For dinner. Nora. Pancakes or love Blake, they go to their dorms and cook something for everyone. The guys are in charge of the meals. Ren was busy making pancakes again. John. Hey Issei can I talk to you about something? Issei. It's about Weiss, isn't it? John. Yeah dude I really like her and she seems to like you. Issei. She doesn't like me dude it's just ego breaking and showing her humble nature within. Also she just wanted Yang to stop with the puns. John. So you don't like her like that? Issei. 
No and sorry to tell you this but she doesn't like you like that either. John felt gloomy. I say. But there is someone who does. John. Who. I say. Purr you dense goof. John. Wait for real. Be real with me. He looked at John right in his eyes with a serious look. I say. I'm dead serious dude I've seen the way she looks at you. John. I say she's out of my league. I say. And Weiss is below your league. In the other room. Weiss. For some reason I want to hurt someone. The girls. With the guys. John. Dude that's just cold. Ren. We're getting off topic. John you should ask her out. John. Guys that's per look at her she's wow. Both Issei and Ren smirked. Issei. Right now you're talking about her like you see her as more than a friend and partner. Ren. So obvious. Issei. She's better for you. You saw her for who is she, not what she is. Ren. When you met her, you didn't even know her name, and she's famous. Issei. That's the one good thing about being a little dense. John. Guys I'm right here. Issei. It's a compliment. John. Reigged anyway even if I did ask her out. I'm just me and she's purr. I'm not good enough. I say. In her eyes, you are. Now quit sulking. Ren. John you do things for her that sadly the rest of us haven't. You are there to listen her opinions and ours. Whenever she's feeling down, you're there for her. Team RWBY have each other, Nora and I are there for each other, and you're there for purr. Nora noticed her feelings for you and kept quiet and you know she isn't the type to change her energetic ways. John thinks back and remembers that he and Purr got close really quick, Weiss was quite cold. It's about time he manned up. John. You're right. It's time I manned up. I'm an ARC and we don't go back on our word. They smile then Issei notices something. Issei. What's burning? They look at each other and their eyes widened. Three of them. Nora's pancakes. Nora mourned her pancakes for the rest of the night, if it wasn't for the extra batter Ren made, then she'd be dead inside. That's almost too much for even Grim to desire. Issei and John made meals for the ladies, John made extra dessert for Pura which he kept in the fridge. After the meal they decided to chat. Yang. So Issei what's your story? Issei. Not much really, I just wanted to do something with my life, do some good. I didn't have an idea as to how until I came here. Ruby. How did you get so strong? Issei. I trained relentlessly. I had to so I could adapt to my semblance. It requires a strong host. Lake. You say as if it's alive. Issei. I know it sounds strange but think about it this way, it's a part of your aura which is a manifestation of your soul, and thus it's a part of you. You rely on it and without it you won't last long it can define who you are sometimes. Lake. There's more to you than you're letting on but, then again I'm doing the same. I say. What about you guys? Pura. I trained because it's my dream to become a huntress. John. All the men in my family in each generation were warriors and are huntsmen. I want to follow in their footsteps. Ren. Nora and I we're the only survivors of your village. We trained so others don't suffer the same fate as our loved ones. Yang. Our entire family were huntsmen, except for our dad, he retired when Ruby and I were born. Our Uncle Crow is still out there kicking grim ass. Ruby. Swear jar. Weiss. I'm trying to live up to the Schnee family name. Just like my sister. Nora. So is say. Tell me more about my fictional parents haha ha ha. say. Hehe <laughs> sure, Thor slayed frost giants, defeated Surtur a fire demon said to be able to annihilate his home Asgard. He even defeated his brother's second son Jormungandr. He's a giant serpent said to be large enough to encircle the globe and bite its tail. Nora. My fictional dad is awesome, Issei. Yeah he is. Greg. I'm gonna tell her, Thor dies fighting that. Issei. Don't you dare she's just recovered from the great pancake fire, Ren. Wait, was his brother a Norse god too? Issei. Yes, Loki the god of mischief. He had three kids, none were humanoid. Everyone. A. I say. The first was an eight-legged horse which Odin rides into battle, second is the Midgard serpent I mentioned, and third is Fenrir. A giant wolf that is fated to kill Odin during Ragnarok aka the end of times. He is so big that when he opens his jaw, his upper jaw pierces the sky, and his lower jaw destroys the land. Loki once turned a lady giant into a wolf so Fenrir could have kids of his own. They are haughty and skull. One is said to swallow the sun and the other the moon. Everyone. Wow. They say. Yeah it's like a very interesting fanfiction. Blake. Who wrote it? I'd like to read that. They say. These are just stories Blake. Sorry. She was disappointed, Issei noticed her bowl lower itself. Ruby. Got more stories like that. They say. Oh yeah. The next one is Greek mythology Ruby, Nora, when I raise my hand, cover your ears. It's messed up to put it mildly. They nod. Weiss. Where will you start? They say. Let's start with the Titans the first gods. After a couple of hours, Issei finished. Everyone had all sort of reactions. One third of Greek mythology was bleep for Ruby and Nora. 
If not, there would be several swear jars full of cash. The guys were doing the dishes while the girls were cleaning up. John? Man those are really diverse stories. You said there's not much to you, but clearly there is. They say. That's true about everyone John. John? I suppose you're right. Ren? So any plans tomorrow? John? Ren would you mind training with me in combat? As I mentioned I was my seven sisters playtime of sorts, so I never got time to train. Ren? Sure but we won't get much time. John? Nora? Ren? Nora? They say. You're the calm and she's the storm. John? First comes lightning then comes thunder. Ren? Truth. They say. You could ask Pura. She's a four-time champ and you two could spend some time together. We know she'll say yes. Ren? I agree. John? Alright then I'll do it tomorrow after class. They say. Cool. Weiss. Squeal. They heard her high-pitched squeal, their ears nearly bled, a few plates cracked and a glass shattered. They go back to the room and see everyone except Weiss covering their ears, Blake seemed to be in the most pain, she was shaking a bit on the bed being suspended by ropes. They say. Damn it Ice Queen, you got a good set of vocal cords, but a soul-piercing squeal isn't the way to show off. John. My head's ringing. Yang. What? Ruby. Yang I've gone deaf. Yang. What? Weiss. Oh quit being so dramatic. Yang. What? Whimper. They all look at the little corgi in front of them covering his ears. John. Why is there a dog in your dorm? Ruby. Well here's what happened. A few minutes ago. Back to real time. John. We should get going too. They all leave, after a while Team RWBY was assigned to go on a small training mission with Dr. Oblick. She took Zway with them. Team JNPR went to do as they pleased. Issei decided to train on the rooftop by himself. He was approached by Osbin. Osbin. Training alone Issei. Issei. Yes sir. To what do I owe the pleasure? Osbin. It's been brought to my attention that you threaten four students, one in particular. Issei. Team Cardin are racists. They nearly hurt Velvet. Osbin. Miss Carlatina. Yes I'm aware about it. Issei. Then why keep them here? Osbin. They earned their place here like everyone else, but should they cause any disturbances then out they go. Issei. Glad to know, just a heads up, if he or his team hurt anyone here, then I might not hold back. Osbin. I'll keep that in mind. How are you holding up? Issei. I'm better now. I like spending time with RWBY and JNPR. Osbin. Good. There's a festival coming up. Issei. The Vital Festival. Osbin. Yes. In a month's time, I would like for you to be my eyes and ears. I'll be in an important meeting prior to it for security planning. Issei. Of course. I'm a lone wolf anyway. Osbin. I though you were a bat. Issei. You know what I mean ha ha ha. Osbin. Ha ha you have combat class tomorrow morning. Issei. Yes professor. He leaves, Issei takes a minute to enjoy the cool night air. He enjoyed the view, he looked down and saw a retreat and a blonde, they are training, John isn't a good fighter, but he's taking it seriously. Issei. Not bad John. Greg. He reminds me of you. Issei. How so? Greg. You were weak too, but you took your training seriously. You got very strong. Issei. John will be strong too. He's not going to endure what I did. Greg. I'm happy to hear you say that. I'm glad you're recovering. I didn't have to divide the entire day. Issei. I noticed Greg. Come on, let's leave them be. He goes inside, Pura and John are training and talking. Pura. Nice block. John. Thanks Pura. He tried to slash but she blocked, he tried a shield bash and she did the same, their shields collided. Both blocked each other's blades. Pura. You're better than you think John. John. Pretty sure it's cause you're a good teacher hey there's something else I want to ask you. Pura. Sure, what's up? John. Would you like to go on a date? Her eyes widened, she lowered her weapons. A smile caresses her face followed by a blush. Pura. I would love to John. John. For real. Pura. Of course, you see me as I am, not a title. John. He well of course I do. Pura. Movie tonight before bed. John. Sounds great. I'll make popcorn. Pura. Hope you like rom-coms John. John. Growing up with seven sisters, rom-coms, drama etc are what I grew up watching so yeah, I'm in. Pura. Fee, I like to cuddle. John. You can do it while eating a dessert I made just. For. You. She loves him more and more with each gesture. They smiled and clashed again. Issei was walking towards his dorm, he was lost in his thoughts, and accidentally bumps into a green-haired girl with red eyes and dark skin. Hey watch it, Issei. Huh. Oh sorry. My mind is elsewhere. Another woman with amber eyes and black hair was with her, behind her is a guy wearing all gray and has gray hair. Emerald take it easy. It was an accident. Emerald. Sorry Cinder. Cinder. Tell him that. 
She turns towards Issei. Emerald. I'm sorry. Issei. It's all good. My bad anyway. I'm Issei. Cinder. I'm Cinder, this girl is Emerald and that's Mercury. Issei. Nice to meet you. You guys preparing for the festival. Mercury. We are, there's going be a tournament. You taking part. Issei. Nope, I'd rather learn about the competition. Mercury. Smart. Emerald. Smarter than you. Mercury. Watch it mint chocolate chip, Cinder. Enough geez you two squabble like children. Sorry about that. Issei. It's fine. They are who they are. Good night. They all part ways, Issei notices his wallet is missing. Issei. We got a pickpocket among us. He used his speed to grab his wallet out of her back pocket and slaps her ass without anyone seeing it. Emerald. Ouch what the buck Mercury. Mercury. What? Emerald. You slapped my ass. Mercury. We may be undercover criminals here, but I'm not that kind of criminal. I have standards. Emerald. So what? Is my ass not hexy? Mercury. It's meh. Cinder. Emerald curb your double standards. Mercury stop pissing her off if you want to slap some ass then pick someone who's into it. Mercury. Gasp Cinder I am a man of culture and etiquette I am a breast lover and I treat women right. Emerald. Then why do you treat me like shit? Mercury. Obviously cause I don't see you as one yet. Cinder. You just dug your own grave. Mercury. What do you? Slap. Emerald. Buck you. Mercury. I know you want to. She kicks him in the balls. Every guy in Beacon flinched. Every guy in Beacon including staff. Farewell brother. F for respects. Every girl was confused. Issei ran to his dorm and laughed till his lungs nearly gave out. Even Drake laughed a bit. He's happy to see some of the old Issei still there. The next day. The ten including Zwei are out sightseeing in Vale. Issei decided to buy some dust for later experimentation from a shop called Dust Till Dawn. Ruby. Hey I know this place, it's where I ran into Torchwick and his goons. Issei. Who? Blake. An infamous thief. Weiss. He's been stealing dust a lot recently. She shows him a picture. Issei looks at it. Issei. He looks like a real piece of work. A man with a flair for the theatrics. Coco would definitely admire his fashion sense. Yang. You've been pretty close with Velvet and her team, you're not gonna forget about us are you? Winks. Issei. There's a lot I want to forget but not you guys and especially not Zwei. Zwei. Arf arf. Blake. So you're a dog person. Issei. Cats are cool too. Blake. True that. Hura wanted to hold John really close, but despite officially dating, he's still a bit dense and didn't notice her clues, Zwei walked up to John and tackled him just enough for him to move closer to her. John. Ouch hey Zwei be careful. He then noticed Pura holding his hand and blushing. He blushed as well and then looked at Zwei. John held his hand out and Zwei gave him a mid-air high five. He's a damn good wing dog. Greg. Smart dog, smarter than you in a way say ha ha ha. Say. At least I wasn't stupid enough to piss off the three factions and get locked away in my wanking arm. Greg. We all have our bad moments. Say. Your moment lasted since you got stuck in the gear. Ha dot. Ren. Anyone want to go watch a movie? All nod. Nora. I hope they serve pancakes. They watched Tachiko a dog's tail. They all cried, Zwei was allowed to enter by the staff as they too had seen this emotional movie, Zwei was comforting to have near them. He got so many belly rubs, ear massages, head scratches and free snacks. Ruby. Sniff dogs are the best. Blake. I think I like dogs now. Sniff dot. Weiss. Sniff good. They are great companions. After the movie, JNPR decided to go see different places, Nora found an all-you-can-eat, John and Pura went on another date. Nora. Hey and I've finally picked a name for my hammer. Ren. Is it Mjolnir? Nora. Yup I have the Poeir. Ren then thought about changing the name of his blade guns, but Stormflower is okay, and he's not that creative. Yang has her gauntlets Ember Cecilia. Blake has Gamble Shroud. Weiss has Mightinister, John has Crossy Amors, Ruby has Crescent Rose, Pura has Milo and Akao A.K. her Javelin Rifle and Shield respectively, Issei has his Gauntlet and Ascalon. The next day, combat class. Linda. Alright class, today we are going to the Forever Full Forest to collect some sweet sap, it's a Grimm's favorite next to negative emotions and human meat. That sap is used to make our signature pancake syrup. Nora has stars in her eyes, and the others sweat dropped. Harden smiled manically after hearing that, too bad no one noticed except to say, he could feel the bloodlust coming off of him. As teams went into the forest, one member of each is in charge of lookout for Grimm. Issei had to go along, if Grimm are going to target anyone, then they would attack him over anyone else well maybe except Kum Tin. Team RWBY was collecting it in jars. Team JNPR was slower to collect as Nora kept drinking it. Harden made his team collect the sap, he planned on throwing the jars at Velvet, Issei and John cause he's jealous that Pura is dating him. 
He ordered his team to find some Grimm and lead them back here, well he did what he planned. He found Velvet and John and threw the jars. Pardon. Eat this. They looked towards his direction, and the jars smashed them on their heads, Velvet's aura protected her, but John wasn't so lucky. Velvet. John. Her cries alerted the others who came in from every direction. Glinda saw John laying there unconscious with shards of glass in his head, some just barely missing his eyes. Hurra. John. She ran to him and saw that he's covered in sticky sap, his blood and glass. She looked at Cardin who was laughing. Cardin. Why do you love a weakling who faked his way into Beacon? You should love a real man like me. Hurra. I'm going to kill you. She aimed her rifle at him as did other students. Linda. Weapons down we have to get MR. Arc back to the infirmary immediately. We'll deal with Cardin later. Boom. Cardin was punched into a tree and his aura fluctuated. They then see Issei. He had an ear visible bloodlust coming from him. Issei. Get John to the medics now. Linda looks at Issei and then back at John and everyone else. Everyone is either scared or angry. This will alert the Grim. Linda. Everyone back to Beacon now. Most followed her as she lifts John using her semblance. Cardin's three team members came towards them with Grim on their six. They are running for dear life, the Grim suddenly stop, and they look towards Issei. He's radiating raw anger and bloodlust. They all charge at him, Cardin and his goons just look on and laugh. Team RWBY stayed to help Issei. Issei. Get out of here girls. You don't want to see this. His voice held a commanding tone. Blake. Let's go guys. He's planning something. They hesitantly follow the other students back to Beacon. Harden. Looks like you're done for now you stupid fraun as Hay start recording. One of his teammates starts recording. A horde of Grimm consisting of Taiju, Ursas and Beolfs attack Issei. He takes out a piece of ice dust. Boost boost boost. Issei spreads his wings and flies up, he throws the charged ice dust straight down, when all the Grimm are below him, in an instant a massive structure of covered in sharp pillars made of ice encases the Grimm, they are completely frozen to the point where they are dead, but can't decompose at all, that never happened before when it comes to Grimm. Issei stood on the biggest pillar in the center, he just looked at the four like a predator watching its prey, letting the realization of their inevitable torment take root as he stood on the ice. In a blink of an eye Issei is now hovering a few feet off the ground right in front of them. They started to whimper in fear. Issei. I warned. You. Harden. What wa dot dot what are you? Issei. I'm a devil. Issei punched one of the three goons into the remaining goons, their auras broke on impact as he made contact. Cardin raised his mace, and Issei caught it with one hand. Harden. Issei just gave him a cold stare and punched him right in the chest, he got the wind knocked out of him, aura protects from physical injury, not pain, luckily he has armor which is now dented. He punched Cardin into the air and then kicked him straight down, his aura took a big hit as he landed hard enough to make him bounce. Issei wasn't done yet, he picked up Cardin by his head and dragged it by the ice, small ice shards broke his aura and started to hurt him, he screamed from the ice cold pain. It was so cold that it was sticking to his skin and then tearing it off. Issei then pinned him to the ice and started punching him, a fist shaped dent in his armor with each strike, the armor was caving in and applying pressure on Cardin's chest, his ribs cracked with each impact. Greg. That's enough. Issei didn't listen, he kicked Cardin on the side of his leg, nearly fracturing it, he fell down onto his knees, Issei interlocked his hands and hit Cardin on his back, forcing him on all fours, he kicked him in the stomachs and knocked him on his back, Cardin puked, then coughed. He was wheezing. Greg. Issei that's enough. Issei looked at the destroyed armor with a phoenix emblem. Memories of Rise are wounding him, trying to take Rias away from him, he knows how it feels to be in John's place, he and his friends becoming targets. Greg. Breath breath. It's over. Issei. Huff 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 huff. Greg. Come on we need to get them out of here otherwise they are our grim lunch. One's already tender. He um. Issei. Our right buck. He called the others to help him take the four back to Beacon or a hospital. Team RWBY is on the way, he brought the goons and laid them down next to their boss, who is missing the skin on one side of his face. The wait felt way too long, he heard a few trees rustle, and out came a Ursa Major and an Alpha Beolf. They jumped onto the ice and were about 20 meters away in closing. Issei got angry again. Boost 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 boost. Issei. Dragon shot. He fired off a dragon shot and it hit them directly including the ice. An explosion rocked the forest and the vaporized ice turned to a mushroom cloud. It created a mist that reduced visibility. Team RWBY and Glinda found him on his knees, his face hidden by his hair and the cold mist. His wings are the only thing keeping Cardin and the others from freezing, since their aura broke, Cardin needed medical assistance ASAP. His wheezing might be caused by blood in his lungs, his ribs are surely broken and must have pierced his lungs. Ruby. Issei. Issei. Get Cardin to the hospital ASAP. Linda lifts them up and they are taken back for urgent care. Team RWBY noticed the massive ice construct containing frozen Grimm. Weiss. What how? 
is say. Is John going to be okay? Ruby? Yeah. Yang. He'll be okay, a few cuts and a minor concussion. Blake. He's lucky that none of the sap or glass went into his eyes what happened here. Is say. Sniff I happened. Weiss. Did you do that to Cardin? Is say. Yeah. Yang kept Ruby behind her. Is say. You're afraid of me. Ruby. Is say please talk to us we're your friends. Is say. Yeah I'm thankful for you guys, all of you sniff dot dot I'll see you all after a while. He flies away leaving Team RWBY at the site of his attempted murder. He flew to Vale and bought a pack of cigarettes. It was getting dark so he flew back to his dorm and stayed there, he didn't answer any calls or texts from anyone. Office suddenly appeared. Office. Is say. Is say. Oh, office. It's good to see you. How are you? Office. I'm doing good. You are right about life. I eliminated all Chaos Brigade members are you alright? They say. No I hurt someone really badly after he hurt my friend. The office just hugs him and he hugs back. The office. Let it out. They say starts to let it all out. He cried, he took his anger out on someone far too much and he nearly died. A few minutes later. He calmed down. The office. Feeling better. They say. A little bit thank you. The office. Would you like to know what's happening back home? He nodded. The office. Peace, no more threat of war, the beast is still sealed, and all gods are making sure it stays that way. Your family is very proud of you Issei, and the dragons are proud of Dreg. I subdued Vali when he demanded that I bring him here. Irina misses you. Issei. I miss everyone too. The office. Issei once you heal, call out to me and I'll come to you along with the others. Issei. Thank you office. You're a damn good friend. Sniff. Knock knock. The office. Take care. She disappears. Issei. Who is it? Velvet. It's me Velvet, John is awake. He opened the door and they go towards John, his head is wrapped in bandages. They say. Hey John, are you feeling okay? John? Yeah. I'll be okay, but what happened after I blacked out? They say. I'll tell you but rest first. You'll need it. Once you recover then we start training. John? Deal. They say left and let the others to talk with John. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want the next part. Also check out my other video that has been shown and left. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please like and share this video. And have a fantastic day. Bye.